So um, we are now um, going to have a quick look at probably what is my favourite feature of Windows Server, uh, sorry, of Windows 8, and uh, in an enterprise scenario. If we look at what's happening in the world, people are using lots of different devices, and the types of devices that they're using is changing. Lots of people want to be able to bring their own device into the office and just bring in whatever piece of hardware they have. They might have uh, a tablet device at home that they've just bought, but just popped down to the local um, massive electronics store, bought themselves a really nice new bit of kit. They may have something which is a little bit older um, that may not be completely able to support everything that you want to do inside of your corporate environment. Yeah. They also might be sharing those machines amongst all of their family members at home. Really good example of that, Simon, is that um, TPM chips on uh, motherboards are far from pervasive. So we have a group policy at Microsoft yeah, you have to run BitLocker, you have to have, a, we only buy hardware with TPM chips on, but what happens if you've got old hardware and you haven't got that thing? Yeah, absolutely. So lots of, um, lots of ideas there. Also, people want to be able to, um, to, to move around more freely. They want to be able to just jump on a plane. They might not necessarily want to take devices with them in order to be able to go to another location. So we've been thinking about that and developed something called Windows to Go. And this is probably, as I say, my, um, my favourite feature inside of Windows 8 um, from an enterprise standpoint. What this allows us to do is actually to take a copy of Windows 8 and install it onto a USB key. And then when we stick that USB key into a uh, PC, we will then get a boot into our, directly into our corporate environment. So we'll get our domain join machine that we can actually log into with our domain creds. I know you're looking a little bit confused here. We actually do various things to make sure this is really secure. Mm -hmm. So we could BitLocker encrypt the stick. We could yep. also um, use direct access, deploy a direct access environment, so that when this stick is plugged into a machine and we have an internet connection, this connect gets a direct connection into our corporate environment directly and is fully encrypted with um, AES 256-bit encryption back to our direct access servers. So it's just like it's on the corporate network. Really, really handy way of being able to get back into that environment from virtually any kind of PC-based device. So BitLocker with no TPM, and essentially I've got my office environment, not just Windows 8 on Absolutely, here. yeah, you've all got all your apps, apps on there as well. All of your apps. And all my creds and everything else yeah, on my desktop all delivered and out decks and everything else. USB yeah. kick. Absolutely, so all of that delivered out to you. And that is what we, what we actually put in place with Windows to go. The way that it works, um, you take a machine that's inside of your environment, so uh, one of your Windows 8 dev devices has to be Windows 8 Enterprise. This is an enterprise-only feature. So you have to have a Windows 8 machine. You then go and install Windows 8 to go onto your USB key. Um, then you can go and take that away and connect it into any other machine inside your organization or somewhere else. So you literally take it, plug it into the machine, boot it up, BitLocker's on there, direct access is on there if you want to, and off you go. You have your enterprise machine. That's really cool. It is. Very, very, very cool. So instead of that boot to VDI thing the gentleman was asking about on the questions, we could just hand out, and, and I know I was talking to some people from Microsoft Germany the other week who weren't full-time Microsoft employees, and they've been given these. So yeah. they can use, um, maybe they're working for an agency and they've got their own laptops, mm -hmm. like David who was on earlier, would just come in and work for us for a couple of weeks. He might write some course material for us or something. And we can just say, here's, here's an official desktop for you and uh, we've set you up with an account and what have you. So you can use your normal machine, but you're working on our stuff while you use this. Absolutely. Now, obviously, this is not a standard memory stick, Simon. It's not a standard memory stick. There is a little bit of um, clever stuff here. So it's actually a relatively inexpensive device. These are about um, currently retail for about £80. And this, the memory that's inside this is actually more akin to a, an SSD drive. So it's oh. more durable than uh, what I'd kind of call supermarket memory stick. So you go into a supermarket, you buy one for 10 quid, that's obviously going to be lower quality than something like this, which would uh, cost a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. And in the case of this, we have a, a stick which is durable for lots of read and writes, because that's what happens in Windows. We have a page file on there, lots of reads and writes that we have to actually apply. Sure. Some things that people often ask about this, which I think are really well worth mm -hmm. hiding off. What about the, uh, the local hard drives inside my machine? Can I access them? Can I do stuff with them? Can somebody take all of their corporate data home on this, what it would be, mm. a BitLocker encrypted stick, and copy that onto the hard disk of their machine? The no. answer is no, they can't, because we don't allow access to any of the hard drives inside uh, the machine, which is booted from a Windows to go stick. And I kind of like that too, because again, back to my sort of my other professional environment, if I keep using my, my good friend David, who's uh, sitting in the front row here, uh, he's actually really here, um, then, um, you know, we've segregated his, um, maybe his contractual work in the company he works for from the work that he's doing when he's working for Microsoft. So one can't see the other. Yep. So that's good in both ways, if you like. Absolutely. And there's some other security uh, things that we want to think about mm -hmm. there as well. Things like the Windows Store, not enabled by default there. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about downloading applications from the Windows Store, 
what we actually do is say that anybody can download an app five times, and that's tied into a hardware ID which is drawn from the BIOS inside of the machine. If we move this stick between lots of different mach machines, we very quickly start to use up um, those five installations that you get from the store. So we do have to be slightly mindful of that. So then I'm thinking, OK, the usual world, and I'm sure we're going to get asked about this too, is the world of drivers, so the graphics adapter, the network cards and so on that are on Absolutely. the physical machine. How do we deal with that? Well, we can um, enterprise provision these and do that through, um, through Config Manager, through MDT, mm -hmm. and actually drive, deliver all of the... Um, required drivers that we might need into this. Right. But of course, this is going to boot up with all of the drivers that are available inside of Windows 8 natively, which is obviously yeah. for um, the vast majority of hardware that's out there at the and moment. And this is just the start of these kind of devices, because I've seen um, I, I, our friend Jamie had a sort of like a passport drive, didn't yeah. he, that was emulating a, a stick, but it's actually a hard drive. Absolutely, yeah. Had a really massive hard drive. This one's like a, the size a, of a phone. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't massive, massive. Yeah, it was just a physically, um, physically small, but logically lots of storage space on there. This one, uh, this little stick obviously only has 32 gigabytes in it. Mm -hmm. uh, that stick that Jamie had, uh, that drive mm -hmm. that Jamie had was a, a 500 gigabyte drive, mm -hmm. so really handy. We also get asked, um, what, what kind of spec do we need to, to connect these into? Yeah. Do we need USB 3? Do we need USB 2? Well, the answer is USB 3 is preferred, but USB 2 will work. Right. So if we plug this into a USB 2 drive, which, let's be honest, most devices currently have USB 2 mm -hmm. drives, this will still boot. We will still be able to get into our OS. And this is an enterprise edition only play as well. It is an enter enterprise edition only feature. Right. So let's um, make one. Let's go and have a quick look at what we're doing here and flip over to one of our demo machines. Hopefully, uh, connecting to the right one first time. There we go. Excellent. <laughs> that uh, scared us for a second while it took a moment to, uh, to just <laughs> lock just on. just wheel over a bit over here. You, sorry, I'm probably... That's probably screwed up our uh, camera. Angles. OK, so I am actually just on a, uh, on a normal Windows 8 to go machine here. Um, let's just show you a couple of things uh, around this. I'm actually, sorry, logged on to a Windows 8 Enterprise PC at this point. So I'm just going to go and have a quick look uh, at the computer. So I'm going to go and just type in rename. It's the easiest way for me to get to these settings I find. And we'll notice that this machine is actually a member of a work group. It's yep. not actually a member of our domain at this point in time. And the computer's name is actually test. And if you notice as well, when I'm logged on, I'm logged on with a user called tester. So just to uh, show you the difference mm -hmm, between mm -hmm. um, where we're going to be in a second and where we are now. And also, you can see that we've got Hyper-V Manager um, there as a tile on our, on our start menu. So in order to get to Windows 8 to go and to build a, uh, a Windows 8 to go key, I'm just going to type in uh, Windows to go. And you'll notice that down here on the settings menu, we have we found two things. We found Windows to go. We found the uh, change Windows to go startup options um, program as well. In this case, we're going to select Windows to go because we're going to go in through the process of creating a portable drive here so that we can take this home and boot from devices. So, but this, in a, in a, um, although consumers could theoretically do this themselves, Simon, would they, the normal play would be that these would be handed out by the IT department. Would they? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Normally, you would uh, build these as a, an enterprise device and hand them out, but there's no reason why if you provision the, uh, the required files on the machine, like we have in this case, mm -hmm. um, that users can't build their own sticks. And this becomes a, a user-driven experience. So I've just plugged in that USB stick, the uh, Kingston DC Ultimate USB device. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what devices you can go and buy right now to mm -hmm. use with this, if you go and check the Springboard website, you'll be able to find a list of all of the devices that are currently uh, available. Um, in this case, I'm going to say uh, next, because we've now selected the device that we want to use. Right. And then I'm going to add in a search location, which is actually going to be my C drive. And it's going to go and look for the Windows 8 installation WIM file. We'll then go and say Next. And then we can turn, decide to turn on BitLocker at this point. Um, we could enter a password. Right. We're going to skip that. I don't, don't want to do this. It's a, um, so that's why we make it user enabled, because that each, each one of these keys we make is going to have our own password. Absolutely. So we'd, yeah. we'd actually have some share, maybe, with yeah. this on, and, and, and direct people to that as part of policy, perhaps. Yeah, quite possibly. Okay. So we've created the, the stick. We then click Create, and that's going to go and format the disk. Um, it'll take a few minutes to um, mm -hmm. format that disk and make it fully bootable. I'm not going to run through that entire process, but what I am going to do is just um, go and, uh, in fact, I'm just going to go to the Start menu, and I'm just going to go and uh, do the other Windows to go option, just to show you that one. Windows. Yeah. So you go. And probably settings, and go to Windows to go startup options. And then it's going to ask me what I want to do. And now what I'm going to say here is that I want to restart this machine um, to use Windows to go. This is something I do on Windows 8. And the reason I would do this on a Windows 8 machine is because the chances are we're using the UFI BIOS. And as a result of that, we don't necessarily have enough time to be able to press the F12 key or something like that to get into right. it to change the BIOS boot device. 
but there's no requirement on new hardware for this. And uh, what, what's really good is when we do this in person and live, uh, is we usually pick somebody in the audience to come out with their laptop, and then we put our stick into their laptop just to Absolutely. show how it works. So I'm now just going to uh, restart this machine. And we're going to then select the correct boot option as this begins to start up. I just uh, hit the F12 key because it's obviously the most critical thing to do and select the right uh, boot option from the boot menu. Yeah, we can perhaps just, if I just, can't really move that out of the way, Simon, but uh, see the little lights glowing on the side of this thing. And in fact, what I'll do is actually insert the stick that I prepared earlier into this machine as opposed to uh, the current one. So pop this into the side there, turn it back on. select the Kingston Ultimate and fully aware that you guys can't actually see this at the moment so um, we will uh, give this a second to uh, to kick in and restart into the correct OS So that's now booting up into our new uh, Windows to go OS. We'll just turn this screen round a little bit so that we can uh, see it as it starts to boot. And then hopefully in a second or two, when we uh, get to the point of having loaded the video drivers, we'll be able to get a nice clean uh, projected output from this particular screen. Oops. Yeah, all attached. Sorry, Simon. So we're just getting all the drop device drivers ready. This is the first time it's ran on this particular machine. And there we go, we've picked up uh, the, the device drivers, and there we have our Contoso login screen for Alice, who we've seen a couple of times in various demos over the past couple of days. We'll sign in with her um, Contoso credentials. That's uh, gonna it's also worth bearing in mind, Simon, that uh, you are actually connecting over wireless at the moment, aren't you? Uh, I could be, absolutely. So, you, um, we oh, currently, you yeah, you are connecting over wireless. Yeah, currently don't have a lot, of, um, a lot of battery in this particular machine, but not a problem. We are now actually signed on with our, um, with our Corp credentials onto a Corp machine. I can pop along to uh, one of my file servers here. So let's just go well, and launch. As soon as you try and open the game store, Simon, will that, game, will that policy still be applied? No, won't, will it? Uh, no. So I can't actually go and launch the store at the moment because we're on a USB to go stick. So it's oh, not right. able to uh, allow me access oh, sorry, to the store. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, I'm just going to oh, connect wasn't... into Contoso Private, which is our Wi Fi network. Pop in the password. Right. So the moment her credentials are cached on this machine, she's Absolutely. actually logged in. Yep. Yep. Absolutely, so she's logged in with a class credentials just as somebody would do if they went home. Uh, we'll pop along to our London One file server. Um, and actually, we are using the, uh, the wrong um, oh, the keyboard, yeah. keyboard on this one because we have an Irish keyboard on this particular machine. With an um, American keyboard, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it makes life a little bit more tricky in terms of uh, browsing the network because we don't have a backslash key. London One shares some sh sh uh, shares on that, I think. Not having a backslash key is incredibly, there we go. London 1F, I've already been there, which is kind of handy. Let's try uh, just London 1 without key mashing. D dollar. Let's try D dollar, that's a good call. D dollar. She's not a local administrator, Simon. She's not, but she should still have access to that share. Should she? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, ah, that's one. I've created the wrong server. Let's try file server one. Okay, why has she not got access to that network path? Did we connect into the right? Yep, can say private. Just so going I'm to guessing one address. you can actually ping. Yeah, if you can't ping it, my friend. That might be, that's always going to be a challenge if you can't actually see London one. Uh, yep, ping file server one. Okay, so our file server appears to have gone down, um, which is uh, kind of strange okay. and a little bit odd. But we have our, um, our full enterprise connectivity, um, assuming that we actually... Um, yes, yeah, so you had an IP address in the network. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Absolutely. Have connectivity back into our network. Right, Simon, um, obviously we've, we've been a bit crippled by our time there. Um, lots to talk about. 
Uh, this is hopefully, uh, I should actually point out, obviously, the streaming thing was is, is an experimental platform we're using here so uh, to deliver this content with. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So it's a test. So uh, you've all turned up. We enjoyed doing it. So hopefully you're going to do a few more. Yeah. So the, um, so the best place to go and download the evaluations for all of this uh, is the same place that yeah. we've been pushing all the way through. Um, please go and uh, download those evals and um, pop along to UKIT Pro uh, and email us.